Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a rotisserie. Now let us know in the comments below what your first charcoal barbecue was. This was mine, it's about eight years old now. It's definitely seen better days, but the main thing is the motor still works and the forks and the rod are still in good condition. So we'll do a lamb leg today. I'll show you the setup. We'll go through everything from start to finish that you need to know. Uh, so we'll get started by prepping our charcoal. All right, so to start, get your rod and your forks out of the way because that's just gonna get in the way when we're trying to get our charcoal going. Then if you've got a fire lighter, lay one or two of them down. You can either pile your charcoal up over the top of it, or if you've got a chimney starter, use one of them. We basically wanna get about two to three kilos of charcoal lit. This is gonna be about a two to three hour cook. We've got about a two kilo leg of lamb. So yeah, we're looking at about an hour per kilo thereabouts, but we'll go through the cooking process a bit later on. So we'll start by getting some charcoal going. All right, so a full chimney there is about two kilos worth. So that'll be fine to get us going. So we'll come back in about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes once these are nice, ashed over and ready to go. All right, so while our briquettes are catching light, we're just gonna get this lamb leg ready and put onto the rod and then we'll secure it with the forks. But first we're gonna season it. So I just wanted to show you three awesome lamb rubs because I get asked all the time, what's your favorite lamb rubs? If you have something different, be sure to let us know in the comments below so everyone can see it. But we've got the Butcher's Axe Hunter, the Smoky Pasties Game On, and then the Heavenly Hell Wham Bam Smoking Lamb. And that's the one we're gonna use today because I haven't used it on a lamb leg before. I've used it on some ribs and a couple of other things, and it is awesome. So look all three of them up. I'll put them in the description below. But as for now, we're just gonna season our lamb leg up and then get it threaded onto this rod. All right, and now to get out onto the rod, you obviously wanna take the side with the spike out first. Then you wanna set the one near to the handle as close to the middle as possible, and then you can make adjustments when they get on. So what I like to do is just try and get it as central as possible and then push it through. Check once it comes out the other end, that looks pretty good. And then we'll push it all the way in. I'm gonna try and get it so all your forks are in there as well. And then we can get this other side back in. That's gonna hold it in place nicely, so. We'll try and position our charcoal when we get it in the spit. So it is central underneath the leg of lamb. We're just gonna leave a gap underneath it so we prevent any flare ups. So we'll come back once our charcoal's lit. All right, so as you can see, the charcoal at the top is starting to ash over nicely. I'm happy with that. That means the majority of it is ready to go. That stuff won't be too far behind. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour it in and then we're gonna push it to either side. And we're gonna create a gap in the middle. So now our briquettes are ready to go. We've got a gap in the middle. If you've got enough space in your rotisserie, you can put a drip tray or something in there. But the idea is to basically have a gap in the middle so any fat that drips down doesn't cause a flare up. A lot of the time you'll be all right anyway, but up to you if you want to do that. So now we'll go ahead and get our lamb on. All right, so just before we get the lamb on, we want to gauge where we want it to be sitting in terms of temperature. So the rule of thumb I like to work with is you should be able to hold your hand directly under the meat where it's going to be for about two to three seconds before it's unbearable. So, yep, it's going to be right about there. So our pins are set pretty good there. If I couldn't hold it under there for any more than a second or two, I would probably raise it. Or if I could hold it under there for about four or five seconds, I'd either lower it or I'd put more charcoal in to create a hotter fire. So 
Now we'll go ahead and get our lamb on now that we're happy with that position it's going to be in. Now we'll flip the motor on. All right, so we're basically just going to let the lamb spin away and do its thing now. We're going to try and maintain that two to three second rule. So if it starts getting too hot, we'll raise it. If it's not getting hot enough, we'll either lower it or we'll just top up with some fresh briquettes. There's no harm in doing that. There's plenty of oxygen in there. The fire's really hot. The fresh briquettes are going to take light really quick. Um, and we're going to basically cook this until we reach an internal temperature of about 145 degrees Fahrenheit or around 63 degrees Celsius. That's how I like to serve my roast lamb. Um, if you want it a bit more well done, go a bit further or a bit more rare, go a bit under obviously. Um, so yeah, we'll come back a bit later on. We'll stop it and we'll check it with our instant read to gauge where our temperature's at. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it so far. We'll just keep an eye on it and see how we go now. All right, 45 minutes in, starting to look really nice. We're getting a few little drips, causing a few minor flare-ups. Nothing I'm concerned about. If you are getting lots of drips and big flare-ups, then just move your charcoal out of the way so it's not dripping directly onto it. All right, about two hours in, I've been keeping an eye on the temperature. I reckon we are just about done. So I'm gonna switch the motor off and we're gonna check the thickest part. We're pretty much around where we want to be. I said about 145, so we've just overshot it a little bit. Yeah, 140 there. So what we'll do is we'll get it out, give it a rest, and it's probably going to climb another couple of degrees while it's resting. That's pretty much bang on where we want to be. Then we'll slice it and serve it. Right, so now we're going to take it inside, let it rest at room temperature for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to slice it and serve it. It's only been about five minutes. I can't wait any longer. I've got my absolute overkill of a carving knife, so we'll take a couple of slices off. That is looking sensational. Right, we'll have a quick taste. All right, time to taste. Oh my God. That is incredible. That flavor is bang on. And that knife, you've seen how easy that carved, that is awesome. We've just picked that up. You're gonna see a lot more of Dow Strong knives. I'll put all the details from everything we've used in the video in the description below. I'm going to go carve this up for the rest of the family. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. Share it around if you think it's going to be useful to share with any of your family and friends. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.